Right before I jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and it's been one year since Canon announced the EOS R5. So how does it hold up? This is my review of the Canon EOS R5 one year later. The announcement of the R5 was a surprising one for a few reasons. One, because they also announced the R6 at the same time, but two, because it was less than two years after their first real mirrorless camera, the EOS R. The EOS R was fine, but it wasn't spectacular in the way of specs, but it did get the job done and it did get Canon into the mirrorless mindset. I always said that Canon was a sleeper of the bunch, but I never thought they would strike back so quick with something that had the potential to be so good. Before we get to the one year later review portion of this video, let's do a quick refresher on the specs of the R5. The R5 has a full frame 45 megapixel sensor that's capable of shooting 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with the electronic one. It incorporates the Digic 10 processor, which is the same processor found in the flagship 1DX Mark III. It has dual pixel AF, five axis, IBIS, beautiful EVF, solid 3.2 inch very angle touchscreen, and it can shoot 8K raw video internally. On paper, Canon absolutely knocked it out of the park. But if we relied on specs and specs alone to determine how good something is, then insert brand name here would still be in business. So how does it hold up after using it extensively for an entire year? Well, let's find out, starting with what almost brought the entire camera system down, overheating. Let's be clear. Canon marketing screwed the pooch. I can still say screwed the pooch, right, Steven? I think. Yeah, I, I think so also. Yeah, Canon marketing spent all of their time hyping that the R5 could shoot 8K video internally, which overshadowed everything else that the camera had to offer. So when Canon released the information about how long you can shoot 4K HQ and 8K video before it overheats, people went nuts and not nuts in a good way. And when reviewers got the cameras in their hands, all they were focusing on was overheating this and overheating that. Most of it was over the top, but it was warranted as that was the feature that Canon hyped the most. A few months after the R5 hit the market, we made the decision here at the studio to send back our Z6s to Nikon, which we were using for the last couple of years to film all of our videos in favor of R5s and RF glass. That means for the past 10 months or so, all photo news fixes, all desk videos, all real world reviews, all B-roll, basically every second of video that we've captured, including this video, has been with the R5. The big question is, have we had any issues with overheating? The answer is mostly no. We've set the camera to 4K HQ, which gives us the quality we're looking for and a record time right around an hour before it overheats and stops recording. Now there's been a few occasions where we've been recording off and on in the studio where we've had to take a break around that one hour point to let the camera cool down and that can get pretty frustrating. But we haven't had any overheating issues while shooting real world reviews or other run and gun videos out in the real world in 4K HQ. That's because we're not recording continuously. It starts and stops and we haven't had to stop due to overheating, which is a good thing. Thankfully for us, overheating has not been an issue. But if you're someone who needs to record for hours on end, you'll have to dumb the video quality down to 4K, which is what we do when we do our user guides videos because they take two to three hours to record and we don't get overheating when we do regular 4K. Here's a few quick tips for those with R5s to make the camera record longer. Flip out the screen, take off the battery grip, plug in a USB-C charger with a full battery and use a tripod with a smaller plate and surface area. We found that that gives us about an extra 10 minutes of record time. In terms of video quality, we've been happy with our decisions to kit out with R5s and RF glass. We've seen a huge jump in the quality of our videos from sharpness and colors to nailing autofocus wide open at 1.2, even when on the move. 
Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you two images taken with the R5 and edited using our FroPak presets. Starting with this one right here, we're going to use FroPak 3 starting with Fifth Element. One click, that's what it does. Then we're moving on to King Contrast. Look at what that does with one click, but check this one out. Mount Airy, light and airy, great for wedding photos, great for stuff just like this. And then we've got Prestige Worldwide. But my favorite all-time preset that we've created is... Skittles for something like this. Let me show you that again. One click of the button, let's see what Skittles does with this photo, and boom. Skittles is awesome for landscapes, it's awesome for nature type photos, and it just really makes things go boom. Now if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. Play with the sliders to check out the befores and the afters, and if you decide that they're for you, you can get fropack3 right now at a special discounted price, or if you want to get Skittles and all of the other fropack presets from fropack1, 2, and 3, you can get the triple play bundle and save a lot of money. Now, let's get back to the video. Now I want to switch the focus to still photography, which is honestly where Canon should have focused its promotion. In my real world review of the R5, which is linked down below, I called it a masterful camera for everything that it offers and how it delivers on its promises. So does it hold up a year later in the stills department? It's honestly one of the most well-rounded cameras that I've ever used. From taking it to the zoo to test out Animal IAF and the 800 F11, to photographing a toddler running in the backyard, to portraits, and even Major League Baseball. The R5 is well situated for just about any type of photography. There's an entire lineup of pro RF glass already, including a 28 to 70 F2, which is simply a monster. But with that being said, the RF glass can be expensive and there's currently no viable third party lens options from the likes of Tamron and Sigma. Canon has not opened up their mount technology to third party lens makers like Sony has. That's why you see Tamron and Sigma making native E-mount glass for Sony and doing a fantastic job. This is one area Canon needs to do better in. Not everyone can afford the highest end RF glass and not everyone is looking to be a professional. So less expensive options are needed on the lens front moving forward. The more I've used the R5 in the real world for stills, the more I like it. The biggest revelation with the R5 is its autofocus. For years, Sony has been the leader and the litmus test for other cameras. For total transparency, I've been a Sony shooter for a little over two years now. My go-to camera is the Sony A1, and I have a mix between Sony and Sigma lenses in my bag. The main reason for deciding to go with Sony over Nikon and Canon two years ago was simple, IAF and lock-on tracking. I don't know what Canon did to catch up with Sony so fast on the AF front, but they certainly did. When the R5 came out, I said that Sony still was slightly better with autofocus, but at this point, after using it for a year, I think the R5 and R6 are on par with the Sony's. I simply have a hard time missing. Whether it's a bird flying directly at me at the Renaissance Fair, a headshot at 1.2, or photographing sports, the autofocus rarely misses. I've gone from a DSLR shooter who would try and move my focusing points to where they needed to be, to now embracing the technology mirrorless cameras offer in the way of autofocus. I always come back to this statement when people question allowing the camera's autofocus to do all the work. I'm able to capture images that I otherwise would not have been able to just a few years ago. I am now able to focus on my exposure and composition because I can trust that the focus will go exactly where it needs to be just about every time. The fact that you can shoot 45 megapixel images at 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with the electronic one is insane. There's so much data being moved around, but the camera can handle it because of the CF Express card slot. Let me jump in here real quick and remind you that the super huger mega camera giveaway for 2021 is currently live. That's right, I'm giving one of you the chance to get up to $4,999 to buy maybe an R5 and some RF glass if it can squeeze under five grand, and it's completely free to enter when you head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2021. Like I just said, it's free to enter, but if you purchase Fro Pack 1, 2, or 3, or you are already own them, you will score extra entries. Now, let's get back to the video. 
Now, I do want to point out that in some situations, images taken with the electronic shutter might introduce some rolling shutter. Now, this isn't just Canon, this is any other manufacturer that doesn't use a stack sensor. For example, look at the baseball as it crosses the plate. It looks warped. That's because the readout speed of the image sensor just can't move fast enough to perfectly freeze something moving so fast. But here's a similar image done with the mechanical shutter. You can see that it has no issue. Is this a deal breaker for the camera? No. Just be aware that in some situations, if you're using the electronic shutter to photograph fast moving subjects, you might see some jelloing or warping. The forthcoming Canon EOS R3 will have a stack sensor, which should all but do away with rolling shutter issues with the electronic shutter. But let's remember this for a second. You're still getting 12 frames per second at 45 megapixels raw with the mechanical shutter. The Canon 1DX Mark II DSLR could squeeze out 14 frames per second at 20.2 megapixels and was six grand. So yeah, the R5 is powerful. When I went out to photograph the Philadelphia Phillies, I took a 600 millimeter F4 IS version two that's 10 years old, along with an EF to RF adapter. The focus worked perfectly. In fact, a few times when a player was rounding second base, IAF actually kicked in, not just face detect. The good news is adapted EF glass works perfectly and in my testing, so have newer third party lenses from Tamron and Sigma. The raw files the R5 has been capturing in combination with RF glass have been fantastic. The colors have popped, the contrast is on point, the details are solid, and even if I don't get my exposure perfect in the camera, I can bring it back in Lightroom without any issues, as long as I didn't miss by five stops. In the past, when you had higher megapixel cameras, you tended not to push the ISO too far. The reason being, the higher the ISO went in combination with the more megapixels, the more noisy and grainy an image would be. Well, during the R5 real world review, I pushed it to 16,000 ISO and it's more than usable. Yes, you see some noise and grain if you zoom in, but it's 16,000 ISO for God's sakes. I don't normally push past 6,400 ISO anyway, and this camera can handle it with flying colors. On a side note, I do not use any denoising software ever, period, end of story. Just embrace sharp grain if you have it. All those denoising softwares do anyway, in my opinion, is smooth out your image, making it look less sharp. Let me cut in and say, if you're enjoying this video, could you please give it a thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And on another note, the IBIS in combination with IS in RF glass is insane. You can handhold to shutter speeds that are super slow and still get sharp images when you're not shooting fast moving subjects. So does the R5 hold up after a year? The R5 is better situated today than the day it was announced. Through a few firmware updates and new lenses being released, you cannot go wrong with the Canon R5. It's a fantastic camera in its price point for pretty much any situation you throw at it. Amazing video, amazing stills, top-notch autofocus, great raw files, great lens selection, both native and adapted, and honestly, the proof is in the pudding. We use R5s and some R6s for pretty much all of our videos at this point. Steven uses the R5 over his 5D Mark IV, and neither of us will be going back to DSLRs. The truth of the matter is, I can't see this camera being outdated anytime soon. We're talking years. But will I ever switch to Canon for my stills? The answer to that is... Potentially. Right now I use the Sony A1, which has a 50 megapixel stack sensor that shoots at 30 frames per second and has insane autofocus. I do prefer Canon's glass over Sony's, but Canon cannot match Sony right now on the high-end mirrorless pro front. Will the R3 or the yet to even be discussed R1 be the high-end pro camera to challenge Sony? I think the answer to that is, is yes but it's going to take some time. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronos, photo.com. See ya.